Modern medicine has brought many marvelous modernizations to the treatment of disease and the prevention of disease. But there is one thing that modern medicine has brought us that can be quite dangerous. In fact, it can be completely devastating to your health and to your future if you're not aware of it and not aware of these seven steps that you can use to prevent polypharmacy from happening to you. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. Let's talk about polypharmacy, why it's such a big deal for you and your loved ones, and then we'll talk about seven ways that you can prevent polypharmacy from ever happening to you or someone you care about. So first of all, let's talk about what's polypharmacy. It's such a new concept. It's only been around for a decade or so that mainstream medicine hasn't really decided on a definition of it yet. But the uh, accepted definition is if you're on five or more medications prescribed by a doctor or a uh, list of doctors, then that's polypharmacy. And your risk for having either medication misadventures, which is a pretty way of saying that you had a, a bad outcome because of being on too many medications, uh, or sometimes disastrous side effects or complications can come from polypharmacy. When you're taking one or two medications and your doctor prescribes a third medication to go with that, you don't just double your risk of drug interactions and side effects. You actually triple or quadruple the, the, the risks. Now, it's not a guarantee that you're going to have any of these, but the risk, the likelihood, the chances of go up almost astronomically for each new medication that's added to your current medication regimen. So I want you to understand very clearly what this could potentially mean for you or for someone you care about who is suffering from polypharmacy. Uh, patients can have a decreased quality of life. They can have uh, the decreased ability to be mobile. In other words, to get around under their own uh, locomotion. Uh, patients can have increased mortality. They can have increased morbidity. You can, you're actually much more likely to be uh, placed into a nursing home when you don't really need that due to polypharmacy. There's so many things that polypharmacy can lead to that you don't want, I promise. So please pay attention to the seven tips I'm going to give you at the end of this video. Uh, maybe even commit them to memory or write, jot, jot them down because you don't want this to happen to you. You don't want someone you care about, including yourself, to wind up in a nursing home prematurely thinking that you're now demented when really you're just suffering from the side effects and drug interactions of polypharmacy. It's estimated that a large percentage of the frailty in older people, of the disability, of the falls, of, of just weird side effects coming out of nowhere in people over the age of 40 is very, very commonly due to polypharmacy and not due just to being older. Polypharmacy is going up as a, uh, just the percentage of people on five or more medications is going up almost astronomically. A 2015 report uh, showed that from the year 2000 to the year 2012, uh, the percentage of people on five or more medications doubled just in that short period of time. And that trend, I promise you, continues to this very day. And that's very concerning because of all of the drug interactions and, and potential side effects that can come from that. This puts older people at much greater risk. Now, even a young person in their teens or 20s who's on five or more drugs, prescriptions, they're going to notice that they have many more side effects, some of, of which can be disabling. But as you get older, polypharmacy becomes a much, much bigger deal. One of the things that polypharmacy can bring on is a prescribing cascade, which not only makes the polypharmacy worse, but then can also make the, the drug interactions and the side effects worse as well. So for example, you're taking one of your five medications you're taking is giving you heartburn. And your doctor, rather than uh, looking at your medication list with fresh eyes and saying, well, wait a minute, one of your drugs uh, that you're taking, it can cause heartburn. Maybe we should stop that medication or change it. They just prescribe you a new medication for the heartburn. 
And so now you're taking six medications. And so then you have, uh, you're having trouble with your memory. And instead of the doctor saying, well, you know, the poor person's on five medications, perhaps that's harming their ability to remember things, they start you on an Alzheimer's medication because of your failing memory, never once even considering the fact that polypharmacy is the reason you now have heartburn and that you now have a failing memory and that you now perhaps have insomnia and multiple other side effects or multiple other new symptoms that your doctor's treating as a new thing when really it's coming from the polypharmacy. The reason, in my opinion, that polypharmacy is becoming such a big deal in a negative way is that doctors are trained very well on how to prescribe medication, but very few doctors uh, ever receive any meaningful training on how to de-prescribe. And in my opinion, de-prescribing is a much more powerful therapeutic tool than prescribing a medication. And so hopefully, as polypharmacy and the, the terrible outcomes that go along with it become more on the radar of modern medicine, I'm hoping that more and more doctors will embrace the concept of deprescribing. And the seven tips I'm about to give you, you're going to help remind your doctor that if anything, you'd rather them stop a medication rather than start a new medication. Now, if you've been listening to this video thinking, well, now wait a minute, I'm the patient. It's it's not really, really my job to be considering whether I need to start or stop a medication or if I'm taking too many medications. That's not really my job. And I don't feel like it's my place, perhaps, to say out loud to my doctor the seven things that you're about to recommend that I say to my doctor. And I would caution you that although it is not your fault that polypharmacy is your problem, it is indeed your problem that polypharmacy is your problem. And you have to understand this. Doctors are very good at prescribing. Many of them are terrible at de-prescribing. In fact, the thought never occurs to them. Uh, doctors actually can charge a higher level of service. If you have more diagnoses in your chart, they can charge a higher level of service, uh, office visit, the more medications that you're taking. And so I'm not saying that they're putting you on more medications just to charge a higher level of service. I'm saying that the human nature of this issue is, first of all, they're not trained to deprescribe. Secondly, they actually get paid better if they don't deprescribe. You can kind of see how it would be kind of easy for a doctor to forget to mention that perhaps you don't need all the medication that you're currently taking. So here are seven easy tips that you can use to prevent polypharmacy in, in both your case and in the case of anyone you care about. And if also you can use these seven tips that if you already suffer from polypharmacy, you can use these seven tips to slowly but surely get polypharmacy out of your life and out of your medical chart. Tip number one is every single time you see your doctor, you're going to take every medication that you've been prescribed by any doctor, not just that doctor. You're going to take every over-the-counter medication that you take, even if it's not a prescription medication, and your supplements. You're going to put them all in a big brown bag, and you're going to have a brown bag session with your doctor. You're going to lay them all out on the exam table and say, this is everything I'm taking. Are there any drug interactions? Are there any of these drugs that I no longer need to take? Are there any of these drugs that I can safely decrease the dosage of? And finally, are there any drugs that we can just not renew and not prescribe them anymore so I can take them off my list? This is one of the most powerful tools that you can use as a patient to protect yourself from the dangers of polypharmacy. Tip number two is to ask the following question. Anytime your doctor is about to prescribe a new chronic medication, not, not just a short-term thing like an antibiotic for an infection, but something that, that for all uh, intents and purposes you're going to be taking from now on, ask this question. Is this medi medicine really necessary? And again, you might think, well, gosh, that feels a bit offensive. They are, after all, the doctor. They wouldn't be prescribing this for me if they didn't think it was necessary. Au contraire, this is not true at all. Many doctors actually have the false expectation that, that you have the expectation that since you went to the doctor, you want a prescription. And indeed, many patients do want a prescription. 
but you are a smart patient and you know better than this. And so when you ask this question, you are basically loading the conversation in your favor. And, and in many cases, you will find that the doctor says, well, no, actually, uh, we can probably hold off on this. And if you're still having this problem, uh, we'll prescribe it the next time you come in. You just saved yourself a prescription medication. You saved yourself a copay. You saved yourself a call to the insurance company to try to get it covered. And you just saved yourself from potential polypharmacy by asking this one key question. Tip number three is the motto, start low, go slow. And so anytime your doctor's about to prescribe you a new medication that you uh, anticipate you'll be taking for a while, ask your doctor, is this the lowest uh, dose that, that I can take? Is there a lower dosage of this? Uh, in many cases, doctors, you would think they would start low and go slow. But in many cases, doctors are so eager to get to that therapeutic benefit that they'll start you on a much higher dosage. And as you get older, this becomes much, much more important and potentially much more dangerous. So always ask, is there a lower dosage that we can start with? Tip number four is if you start one, stop one. And so if you're already on three or more medications and your doctor says, hey, I'm gonna prescribe you this new medication, ask the question, okay, but which one can we stop? And in many cases, your doctor has not considered that at all. And just you asking that question very politely, your doctor is going to say, well, I mean, I don't guess you need this one anymore. We'll stop that one. And so you just, you just traded medications instead of adding a medication to what was quickly becoming polypharmacy. Tip number five is every time you go to the doctor, you're going to take your big brown bag with everything in it. You're going to line them all out and you're going to ask the following question. Which one of these do I no longer need? Which one of these can we stop now? Or which one of these at least can we decrease the dosage of? This is a very powerful question because it's going to prime your doctor's mind that, hey, this patient doesn't want a handful of pills. They don't want to be on, uh, you know, the, the Monday through Friday pill caddy that's completely full of pills. They don't want that. And so then your doctor will suddenly become your advocate in this regard and say, well, uh, I guess you don't need this one anymore. I'll, I'll stop prescribing that one. You just protected yourself from polypharmacy by asking that one question. Tip number six is to assume that any new symptom that starts within a week or two after you've started a new medication, assume that that symptom is a side effect of that new medication. Don't go back to your doctor and say, hey, I've got this new onset heartburn or this new onset insomnia. I need a pill for that. Go back to your doctor and say, hey, you started me on this pill two weeks ago and I've had trouble sleeping since then or I've had heartburn since then or I've had diarrhea since then. I don't want an, um, another medication for that symptom. I want you to stop for a second, doctor, and consider, is this a side effect of the medication that you prescribed for me? Tip number seven, very important tip, is to establish a, a, a prescription quarterback. Now, this can be your pharmacist at your pharmacy, if you have a good relationship with them. This can be your primary care doctor, either your family doctor or your internist but you're gonna appoint one of your learned health partners as your pill quarterback. And you're gonna discuss all your prescriptions with them. You're gonna always say, hey, ask all these questions, all these tips, especially to that one doctor. But you're always gonna tell your pill quarterback every single medication you're taking, not just the medications that they prescribe. So if you've got a medication from the endocrinologist, the cardiologist, the nephrologist, or any other specialist, your quarterback is to know about that pill immediately. And so as soon as you get home from the specialist, home from the pharmacy, if your pharmacist is not your quarterback, you're going to call your primary care doctor and say, hey, I just saw Dr. McGillicuddy, the cardiologist, and he or she prescribed me the following medications. Add those to my chart and make sure that I'm not going to have a drug-drug interaction or a new side effect from this medication. Or since I'm now taking this, is there another medication I can stop? Having this quarterback, and not only uh, in your mind they're your quarterback uh, to, key, to protect you from polypharmacy, but I want you to make it very clear to them, you are my protection against polypharmacy. 
then they'll put that hat on because any good doctor is going to be like, well, yeah, I don't want you to suffer from polypharmacy. I don't want you to be admitted to a nursing home when we think you're old and demented and washed up. Really, you're just suffering from polypharmacy. So, yes, I accept the role of quarterback. I will do that for you, and I will protect you from the ravages of polypharmacy. Far too many people are admitted to nursing homes unnecessarily every single year because of polypharmacy. Far too many people are admitted to the hospital because of a drug-drug interaction due to polypharmacy. And indeed, far too many people die each and every year from the drug-drug interactions caused by polypharmacy. This is very important. And if you have an older friend or relative who takes a handful of pills, please share this video with them or write down these seven tips and go with them to their next doctor's appointment. Uh, bring a brown bag with them so they can put all their medications and follow these seven tips so that they don't suffer from polypharmacy as well. 